Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the Feast of St. James one of the apostles of Jesus. And we pray in this Mass that like St. James, we may also serve the Lord in life and in death. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist. Let us ask God's forgiveness for all our sins. And let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty ever-living God, who consecrated the first fruits of your apostles by the blood of St. James, grant, we pray, that your Church may be strengthened by his confession of faith and constantly sustained by his protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not constrained, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being given up to death for the sake of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since then, we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We too believe and therefore speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert, those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheep. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Please stand. I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, Command that these two sons of mine sit one at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I am going to drink? They answered him, We can. He replied, My chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right and at my left, this is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, the request of the mother of James and John to Jesus is quite bold and ambitious. He asks Jesus, command that my two sons, James and John, be seated at your, la at your right and at your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered her through a question addressed to James and John. Can you drink the chalice I am going to drink? By asking this question, Jesus is teaching James and John that in following him, what is more important is not the positions of authority and power, but service. In following Jesus, we must be driven not by the desire for power, but by the passion for service. We should not be power-driven we should not be position-driven. We should be service-driven. And in fairness to James and John, they indeed learned this important lesson Jesus taught them. St. James, whose feast we celebrate today, was the first among the apostles of Jesus to die as a martyr. He was the first among the twelve to shed his blood for Jesus. He was beheaded by King Agrippa in the year 42 or 44 AD, just a few years after Jesus died rose again and ascended into heaven. In fact, St. James' death is the only martyrdom among the apostles recorded in the New Testament. St. James learned that in following Jesus, 
service must come first. And our first reading today expresses in a beautiful way this lesson learned by St. James, that in the life of an apostle, in the life of a follower of Jesus, it should always be service, even to the point of offering one's life. As St. Paul tells us in our first reading, death is at work in us, but life in you. Everything is indeed for you. Everything is offered for service of others. My dear brothers and sisters, there are people who serve because they are obliged to serve because they are in a position. Naglilingkod dahil kailangang maglingkod dahil meron silang posisyon na dapat maglingkod. There are some who serve because they want to be in a position of power. Naglilingkod dahil may ambisyon pala na magkaroon ng posisyon at kapangyarihan. But let St. James inspire us today to serve even without positions of power, even without authority. Maglingkod kahit wala kang kapangyarihan at posisyon. Dahil sa bandang huli, hindi naman kailangan na nasa posisyon ka pa para lang maglingkod. My dear brothers and sisters, as followers of Jesus, we should be more concerned about drinking the chalice than about sitting at His right and at His left. Please stand. James, the brother of John, was called from mending his fishing nets to follow Christ. Assisted by the apostle who learned to serve others, let us make our prayers. And for every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That servants of the church may perform their ministry in the spirit of service and commitment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those holding public office may perform their tasks with integrity and dedication. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That there may be many young people who will generously respond to the call to the priestly and consecrated life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may learn to share in the cup of Christ's suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our departed ones may be welcomed into the joy of God's kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember our brothers and sisters who need our prayers. And we also pray for all the intentions offered in this Mass. God our Father, may the prayers of St. James assist us as we make our supplication to you. May the pilgrimage of this life be marked by our service of others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Cleanse us, Lord, by the saving baptism of your Son's passion, so that on the feast of St. James, whom you will to be the first among the apostles, to drink of Christ's chalice of suffering, we may offer a sacrifice pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. James, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Help us, O Lord, we pray, through the intercession of the blessed Apostle James, on whose feast day we have received with joy your holy gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I give the final blessing, I would just like to inform you that this week, Father Kali and I will be joining the retreat of the young and junior clergy of the Archdiocese of Manila. We priests undergo a retreat every year as part of our spiritual growth and nourishment. For the past two years, our retreat had been online because of the pandemic. This is the first time after more than two years that we will be holding our retreat in person. And so I ask you to accompany us, your priests, with your prayers as we undergo these spiritual exercises in order to strengthen us in our spirituality so that we could serve you better and we could lead you closer to Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.